Mango Girls highlight three issues. First, dowry. Second is female infanticide. And third is global warming. I still remember why I made this documentary. I have a sister. One day, she called me and she was crying. I was in meeting. I said, what happened? She said, my mother-in-law, she is torturing me and she is giving me pressure to abort my child. What should I do? I say, how can I say? You have answer. As a mother, you know what you have to do. After 10 days, again she called me and there was yelling, screaming on phone. She said, they are beating me, they are forcing me. What I have to do now? I say, you do whatever you want to do. Sorry to say that this kind of cruel answer, but I want to see as a sister, as a mother, what she can do. She ran away same night from that her mother-in-law place and she came my father's place. And my mother called up in the morning and she was literally crying. She saw her spot, horribly they beat, how can they do that? As a human being, I don't know. I can't speak because I can feel that pain is still right here. As a brother, she gave it to the beautiful girl, birth. And I was so happy I saw her. And that I got inspired. What is the solution about this story and female infanticide? How we can change this kind of mentality? People are suffering so many years. And one day, I was sitting online and I saw an article about this village, Dharhara. Dhar means dharti, land. Hara means hariyali, greenery land. There's a meaning full of this village. I told Bob, Robert Carr, I call him Bob. Bob, I want to go to this village and see what is the truth. And he got also excited. And I went to my native place. There are three villages like same name. I went to villages and I, I asked people. They said, no, this custom, we don't do it. Whenever the girl child is born, we don't plant a tree. I was very upset. I said, what to do? Then unfortunately, my brother, he is in NDTV and he's a reporter. He came to visit me and he said, I know this village, I will take you there. And he took me there. When I went there, I felt I am in a heaven. People are so beautiful. And the best part that people told me, when the girl child is born, we celebrate. We treat like a girl and a goddess wealth like a Lakshmi. I went there three times. First, I went with Bob in December. Then we went for mango season because this is about mango. And third time, I went there when the girl got married. We completed this film. It took three years. I want to show you now promo. We have reached the ancient city of Bhagalpur. The distance of Dharahar village from the station is somewhere around 35 kilometers. Girls are unwelcome in India, as in many other parts of the world. In India, female infanticide is as high as 500,000 in a year. These babies are killed by the husband and or by the mother and father because the child is a girl. Every hour or so, a dream marriage turns to ashes when a woman is burnt to death over dowry. Dowry is a crime. This documentary film is a contribution 
in honor of those women immolated by this dubious tradition, and to a small village called Tharhara on the banks of the river Ganges. यहाँ जो हम लोग के जन्म में पेड़ लगाए जाते हैं, तो वो पेड़ बड़ा होके तो फल देता है, फल को बेच के उससे जो अमाउंट होता है, तो हम लोग की शादी में वो खर्च किया जाता है. That is the social security of a woman, and if somebody takes it, some male takes it, you better pay interest. It sounds so, 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 so practical and so fascinating and so liberating. It it suddenly gives the girl such power, um, which is needed. I think it's fantastic to hear that there existed something called Stri Dhan Dhan in this country. In India, where traditionally boys have been preferred over girls, a village in Bihar state has been setting an example by planting a minimum of 10 mango trees whenever a girl child is born and dowry debts today have come to an end. Says Prabhu Dayal Singh, an elder in the village. How many trees have you placed here? Less than 1,000. 1,000. He has planted 1,000, more than 1,000 mango trees is what he says. I just want the world to know about this. This should have made a remarkable um, uh, movement. This could have become a movement. It could have become a national movement. Global warming and deforestation is a grim reality in all parts of the world. Mankind is the problem and the solution is man's own choice. The villagers of Tharhara deserve to be acknowledged by the world for tackling these criminal traditions and change the way man thinks. It's up to you and me to see this light shining in the darkness. I want to show this documentary all over the world, especially Indian who thinks girls are a burden in the family. Actually, it is not. That's all I want to say. Now, Mr. Robert Carr <laughs> is my mentor. He will say about our documentary, Mango Girls and Dorian Female Infanticide. Thanks, Kanal. Hello, John. First, I want to say that uh, I'm very happy to be here. And uh, this is a surprise that I'm interested in continuing to be active. But all my life, I've always been a, a person that has wondered, what is the world all about? I was never satisfied with the status quo. Even today, I'm still wondering what life is. But what the most important thing I discovered about this village called Dahara in Bihar is that they honor the child. When she is born, they celebrate. They don't say, oh, it's a girl, what shall we do? I want a boy. A boy is valuable, not a girl. But they celebrate by planting at least 10 trees. And as the trees grow, the girl grows. And eventually, when the fruits are, are bearing and sold, the money is kept in a fixed deposit for her. So she has as much as five to $10,000 by the time she's ready to be married and for her education. And so this is a gift, you know, gift for the, for the, for the girls in this particular village. But I said, why just the village only? This has got to spread all over India in different ways. This can't just be a localized phenomenon. This needs to be shown. This idea needs to be taken everywhere in India so that people be begin to see that perhaps the mindset they have can be changed. You see, when a girl marries, she leaves her birth family and becomes now a part of her husband's family. So it, that in itself is a, is a shock in, in many cases. That's why they have an arranged marriage. They try to fit the boy and the girl together. They have similar backgrounds. And as in the West and other parts of the world, 
girls and boys marry on their own terms. They meet, they don't need their parents' uh, uh, blessing. But parents usually come around and bless them, even in India too, uh, when there's a, a love marriage, it's called. So, when a woman lives in a, in a so-called foreign atmosphere, a different family, she is subject to the will and whims of her husband and his parents. And if there is not enough money, the parents think, they continue to harass her, beat her, torture her, burn her with iron rods, starve her, threaten her all the time until her parents give more money. And if there's no more money to give and they can't borrow any more money, then they often kill her in what's called the kitchen death, in which they set her afire. This kind of thing is often overlooked because there is so much red tape, so many crimes in India, the police tend to look the other way. Or if they are arrested and sentenced, eventually they get out of jail in a short time. No one really wants to talk about dowry. No one wants to address it. They want to sweep it under the carpet. But we hope that we can awaken people by creating NGOs that will go to villages and begin to talk to people about an alternative way to solve this problem. After all, what is the problem? Why do people want more? What is this drive inside of us that is not content with what we have? We say that we are, feel insecure. Therefore, if I have money, I will be content. I have not seen this in actuality at all. The more we have, the more we want. We are hardwired in the brain, it seems, to continually grab more and more and more because basically the human being is insecure. Why are we insecure? Well, we live in a world of violence. Thousands of years ago, it was the wild animals were attacking us. Somehow we have survived through them thousands and thousands of years, but still we have not changed this need, this greed that we have inside. I found that perhaps we are going about it in the wrong way. How can I be non-greedy? Something doesn't ring true to me. What I found out is that if I understand what I need myself to exist, if I actually know what I need as a person, then greed is not a problem. Greed goes away. It's not there. It's only when I think I need more. So we have to re-educate ourselves. We have to purge ourselves of this cultural input. After all, human beings are just the result of culture. I feel at times I'm just a robot, just repeating the program that my ancestors have put into me through my family, through my association, my upbringing, and so forth. However, there is a spark inside the human nature, and that spark is unique. We have to give it a little attention. We have to give it a little time to grow. If that spark catches fire, then we become a light, not only to ourselves, but to others. So we all have to dig deep into our psyche, find out, and discover that light inside. That light will shine and will destroy the darkness. Okay. Thank you.